Today, we're talking about creating reusable workflows and steps in GitHub Actions. So let's jump right into it. So GitHub Actions, GitHub Actions is a brand, a marketing name, but basically it is a way to automate your software development workflows. So basically it's all about workflows. And this approach is similar to other continuous integration, continuous deployment tools like Jenkins, CircleCI, Travis CI, and others. Um, the benefit, one differentiator slash benefit of GitHub Actions is they're built in right into GitHub. So when you go to a repo, you see an Actions, actions tab right on the top of the repo. Uh, so let's summarize, like what is a workflow? So workflow is the top level of your GitHub action and it is located in your .github forward slash workflows directory and it's a YAML file. So you got your workflow. Inside of the workflow, you can have multiple jobs and those jobs can branch. You can use if then statements and those jobs can run on different runners uh, runners typically correspond to different servers, uh, different OSs as well. And inside the job, you can have multiple steps that generally execute sequentially. So you might want to ask, why do we need to reuse our workflows and our steps? Well, code reuse is a fundamental principle of software development, right? Um, the most important benefit is maintainability. Right? You want to keep your common code in one place. This reduces the amount of code. This simplifies where you have to make changes or updates. Uh, improve consistency because multiple workflows can use the same code. It also can promote best practices, right? Because that single reusable workflow can be optimized to perform in the best possible way. And of course, there's other things like in increasing productivity and reducing errors. So some examples of reusable GitHub Actions can be code signing. For example, you need to sign a Windows file. You send it to a different workflow that runs um, and does its thing and signs that code. You can have a different step or workflow to upload artifacts somewhere uh, where you need them to go to, to a different cloud service that has some unique requirements. Um, you can have security checks, right? Common security checks, maybe common steps that you might want to reuse across multiple workflows, uh, notifications, reports, data processing, um, and many other examples why you want to want to why you want to want to why you might want to reuse code in GitHub Actions. So let's start with a reusable workflow. So what is a reusable workflow? Fundamentally, a reusable workflow is just a workflow that replaces a job in your main workflow, right? So um, you can have multiple jobs in the workflow and one of them could simply point use, um, using the user statement to another workflow, right? So let's actually go into and look at the actual code. So I have a reusable workflow right here. And uh, let me go through this. But before, let me um, kind of high level kind of... Uh, uh, some you know pointers about the reusable workflow. So a reusable workflow can be shared across repositories. So you can have one repository in your org and then other repositories can reuse the same workflow, right? Um, you can share files between your reusable workflow and others, but the sharing kind of works just like it does between jobs. You have to use this uh, build artifacts uh, flow uh, using actions such as upload artifact and download download artifact. Um, the workflow does not inherit environment variables uh, from the main workflow. However, it does accept inputs and secrets. So it does have secrets that uh, it can accept and it can produce outputs uh, for sending data to the main workflow. All right, so let's go through the every line here. Okay, we got your name. Uh, so the schema here is the same as other workflows, right? So there's nothing fundamentally new 
when creating a reusable workflow, if you know how to create a normal workflow, you pretty much know how to use, how to create and use a reusable workflow. Um, the key statements here is on. So it's executed on a workflow call, right? This is the keyword. That means some other job calls this workflow. Here's where we define the inputs. In this case, we got a, uh, an input called the reusable input, another input called the file name. Here, uh, you can have secrets come in uh, from another uh, job. And here's the outputs. We have an output um, called reusable output. And with outputs, you have to kind of map them. All right, there's several steps. You know, your step produces an output. That, that output goes to a job. And then the job's output goes to the workflow. So here we're mass, mac, uh, mapping the workflow output, which is reusable output, to the job output. And the job output in this case is right here, job output, which matches right here, this, this thing in the job. All right, so we got the default shell here. That's all good. Uh, we have a, one job in this reusable workflow. You could have multiple jobs. Uh, we got the output here of the job that maps to the workflow output. Uh, and then it also maps downward to the step output down here. The step output matches um, the step output down here. Uh, so in, inside of the job, we got multiple steps. Uh, we got one step that simply uh, takes in the input, echoes the secret. Um, and creates an output, which is just input underscore process. Um, then it does file processing. It downloads the input file. This is uh, by convention, right? You can pass this in, but in this case, I know it's called input file. It processes the file. Now the actual file name is an input and it, uh, it uploads the output. So basically it adds this file process text to the input file name and uploads it to a artifact called output file. So let's look at a workflow that's actually using this reusable workflow. Let's jump in here, run with reusable workflows right here. And the key part is this job two. This is where it's being used, right? And it, it is being called using this uses keyword. So it uses, and it, when we point to this reusable workflow. And for using it, we actually don't even need to check out our repo, right? Um, GitHub knows where to find this reusable workflow. Uh, and we pass in this reusable input, we give it the file name, we give it a secret. And the input file is uploaded by the previous job. So this job uploads uh, an input file uh, to an artifact called input file. And this last job, it downloads, well, first it prints the output, prints the reusable output, and then downloads the output file and prints its contents. So let's see how this run actually looks. So let's go and go to our actions. We wanna, do we wanna run with the reusable workflow? And let's take a look at this one. So this is how it looks at the top level, right? You see this forward slash here, it's job two forward slash reusable workflow job. Um, let's, let's click into it, see um, what happens here. Let's see, download artifact, processes file, that processes file, nothing, nothing super interesting here. Let's go look at job three that actually prints the output. So you see it printed the output. So reusable output is now the input with the uh, underscore process appended. Uh, then that was out, downloads the output and it prints the file contents. So right here, you see hello world file process being printed. Okay, so that covers our reusable uh, workflow. So let's go now to um, how do we do reusable steps? So fundamentally reusable steps are being used all the time in your actions. So if we go back to um, to our you know any workflow, right? So this upload artifact is actually a reusable step. And in our example, we're going to use a reusable step called a composite action. 
So, uh, and, and this reusable step you use in place of another step. So for example, in our workflow, we have a job, it has multiple steps, and one of those steps uses the keyword uses, and it points to a composite action, which itself might have multiple steps. So just like a reusable workflow, this composite action may be shared across repositories, right? You could have, um, it could be from another public repo, it could be from another private repo. Um, these composite actions, they accept inputs and um, they, they can pass back outputs. So just like a reusable workflow, but unlike a reusable workflow, a composite action inherits the environmental variables. So like the environmental variables of this job or this workflow or this step wrapper will be inherited by this composite action. Um, but it does not inherit secrets. However, you can pass secrets as inputs or environment variables. So um, it still works with secrets. Also a benefit is it runs in the same runner. So it's still the same runner as this job. That means it's using the same disk space, the same environment. So there's no reason to uh, use the build artifacts to upload and download because all the files are still on the same disk right there uh, where the composite action is run and where this, this job is run. So let's, let's go now look at the example of a Composite action. So one thing to know about composite action is they have to be located in a file called action.yaml. So in this case, I created another directory here called reusable steps, and I created a file called action.yaml. And this file follows a different schema than a workflow. So you do have to be somewhat familiar with this, uh, this different schema. So it's not as getting a um, getting a uh, composite action working is not as simple as getting a reusable workflow working. So it's got a name, it's got a description, it's, we've got our inputs. Um, inputs, so fundamentally this, is, this does the same thing as our reusable workflow did, but we do it in a reusable uh, composite action instead. And, uh, and we basically do the same stuff as well as before. We, we take in the input, we create an output, and we process the file. Um, so there's a little bit less code here, right? Because we don't have to upload and download the artifacts, uh, but fundamentally it does the same thing. So let's look at the, the code that's actually calling this. So once again, the, the interesting part is job two, but the job two in this case is bigger, right? Because the job itself has to uh, download the artifact, upload the artifact. Um, another thing you need to do here is actually need, we need to check out the code because uh, we're using this syntax, this relative syntax. So the step needs to find that action. And so the code needs to be checked out. Um, of course, it's possible to check out the code, to check out just that one specific file you need. Um, that's a use case in case you don't need the whole repo. And that's just a side note. Let's see. So let's look at a successful run of uh, this composite action. Let's go back to actions, run with the reusable steps, click on it. Up top, this is how it looks. And this is largely very similar here. We got printouts. Uh, we're printing out our environment variable. We're processing file. We got this input. And let's look at job three. We print the output. And then we print the file contents. So, I mean, the, uh, the job three is basically identical, right? In this case, we've got two workflows Uh, in this repo, we got two workflows. We got one that uses a reusable workflow and then one that uses a composite action. But fundamentally, they do the same thing. It's just a different ways. So this is a just good example of usage of reusable workflows and a composite action. Um, so when do you use what? So generally speaking, generally speaking, you can use uh, reusable workflows for larger units of work and then composite actions for smaller units of work um, for things that and for things that 
can be run on the same runner and use the same workflow, right? So you guys just have to kind of make a judgment call when to use which. That's it for today.